Hello crafters, I'm Jan B and I'm an independent Stamping Up demonstrator. Today I'm going to show you how I made this Christmas card. On the 5th of September our new Christmas catalogue goes live and one of the products that will be available in there is um, shimmer paint. There'll be a choice of four colours. I'm going to be using the frost white today but I have been asked how do you use the shimmer paint? There are several different ways. Um, it's a very, very versatile product. So I'm going to make some videos showing different ways that it can be used. Today's way of using it is very, very easy, probably one of the easiest. And if I tilt this, you can see where I have painted the berries using the shimmer paint. It adds so much, it's such a tiny detail, but it really does add a lot. And I've done something similar on the inside as well. And I've done the berries in there with shimmer paint. There we go. Isn't that lovely? So the stamp set that I'm going to be using is Feathers and Frost, which is this one. So that's the main image that I'll be using. And I'll use both the birds, that one there, and also the season's greeting beautiful stamp set that one. The card pieces that you're going to be needing. The card base is shimmery white and this should measure eight and a quarter inches by five and three quarter inches scored and folded at four and one eighth inches which is 21 by 14.5 centimeters scored and folded at 10.5 and because I do the inside and the outside you need two pieces of cherry cobbler cardstock which measure three and seven eighths inches by five and a half inches which is 10 by 14 centimeters and then two more pieces of shimmery white which measure three and three quarter inches by five and three eighths inches which is 9.7 by 13.7 centimeters all the measurements and the products that I'm using will be available to you in the box below the video so I'm going to start off by doing the stamping and then the colouring and I'm going to start by using Memento ink because I'm going to do my colouring using our stamping blends and I'll use this one for the front and that one for the front and recently I have started using my piercing mat to go underneath my um, cardstock when I'm using um, Memento or Stays on Ink. I struggle with it um, and I'm not convinced that the problem gets sorted out by using um, the pad. But let's see how we get on. So first of all I am going to ink my image and I am going to stamp it up here so I've got an equal border all around the top three sides. And the other thing to watch for is to get the bird so that it sits on the branch like that, you need to have these two branches, the bottoms of the branches when it's facing you up here so when you turn it over it comes down on this side okay so you want you the end of your branches down here then you get that spare bit for the bird the robin mind you it can be any bird you like in the UK for Christmas it's traditionally the robin so right nicely inked bring it over I can't see how far up the cardstock I am from here, but I think it's okay. So give that a good, good press. Yep, that's not too bad. So the next I am going to do is the bird and I'm going to bring this down and see. 
see how far I can get it down to me. Because I want to make sure that I get his feet on the branch. I don't want him to be floating midair. Right, okay, so memento ink again. And you need to tilt him. Just watch where his beak is going and also his tail. There we go. So now I'm going to stamp on the inside of my card as well. So all I need for this one is to ink up the top. really good press now that's come out quite a bit darker and for this one I use the other bird so here we go now this one there isn't a branch for him to uh, stand on but I've decided he's very lightweight so he can stand on two leaves He's got to stand on these, otherwise his tail goes off. There we go. That's good. So I'm happy with that. Right, now the um, stamping blends I'm using are light and dark cherry cobbler, light and, light and dark... Um, in fact, I don't think I'll use the green. Um, this is Old Olive and also the uh, Crumb... Oh, you can't see those. Let's bring them down. Cherry Cobbler, Old Olive and Crumb Cake. I might use the Colour Lifter as well. Depends how all this turns out. Right. If you've not used blends before, my advice is don't colour right up to the edges because as the ink gets absorbed into the paper, into the cardstock, it does carry on soaking through so it will make its own way right to the edge. It's a very very quick way of colouring and you will see that the colour will come through on the other side but that's normal. I really am not much of a colourer. Um, I describe my my type of painting as or colouring as quick and dirty. As you can see, I don't hang around making a fuss. I wish I could do colouring properly. Um, but this gets me through. I don't know if you saw my video that I did where I shared the products that I'd bought during pre-order. That's one of the perks that we have as demonstrators um, so that we've got a chance to play with the products before they go on sale to customers so that we're well prepared to answer any questions. Anyway, when I showed my when I made my video on this stamp set, I said I really couldn't wait to get going with this one because this is my kind of painting. It's easy to get good results. And if you do know how to do colouring properly, um, 
you must get some fantastic results with this one. As you can see, I'm not going right up to the edges, but the ink is filling out by itself. I can see there's one there where I've gone over the edge. There we go, nearly done doesn't take any time at all. all right. So what I do for my bit of shading is I just go on the bottoms of each of the leaves again and this tends to blend itself in And then once I've done all of these, I just go back and just do one or two lines in each of them again. I think I already did that one, didn't I? If you like the idea of being able to pre-order and you'd like to become a demonstrator, I'd love, you, love to have you join my team. Right, that's the first one that I've done. Now I'm just going to go over the bottom bit again with one line. Again, it will blend itself in, but when you're close enough to it, you can see light and dark. I did say I didn't think I'd use the dark old olive didn't I and it is I just go over with the light one I personally I think they're just too small to get much of a much shading in there and I'm happy with the little bit that I do get I don't know if that's too subtle for you to see. Oh, there's a couple of bits there that I can definitely see. So that's what that looks like for me. Let me just do a little bit of shading here as well. I'm still waiting for my um, the other colours of the shimmer paints to arrive. I already had the Shim uh, the frost white and the champagne mist I think it is I had those left over from when we had them in before um, but I didn't actually order them on the first pre or at least yeah the first pre-order because I did do two I did one in August and one September and it's the September one that hasn't arrived yet There we go. Right now, the bird. Um, I start with the light crumb cake. And as I say, this is a robin for me. So I do all of the breast as red. And again, I try and avoid going too close to the edge. I just allow the colour to seep over. Okay, so that that bit. Then 
I will go over with the dark crumb cake and I like to go over his head I've picked up the wrong one. Ah, this is bronze. Oh well, never mind. Now you can find out what um, the bronze pen looks like if you use it with light uh, crumb cake. Okay, so that's his body. Now I'm going to blend it in with the light crumb cake. Yeah, it's not quite as brilliant as it would had that been. Um, crumb cake. Um, that will be okay. I wonder if I can change it for this one. That must be it here, is it? Yeah, let's try it with the correct one this time. I thought that looked rather dark. Okay, so let's start with the light again. So the first one was, this is the way you don't do it. <laughs> Second one is, this is the right way. Right, now let's do the dark crumb cake. Again, over the top of his head. Oh, that looks a lot better. See if we can get that blending. That looks a lot better, doesn't it? The other one went sort of blotchy. Yes, yeah, doesn't look very nice at all. What I will do about that after I finish the video, I will do another bird and then fussy cut it and pop it up on dimensionals like I've done with this one although that's not um, wrong underneath that one um, but I will redo that because that's not very nice at all I don't know if you can see what's happening to it it's sort of bleeding really I suppose so I will cover that up and you will be able to see this on my uh, blog day that I published the video which will be the 5th of September okay so let's do his red breast and I've gone over onto the crumb cake so this is the colour lifter I'm just going to see if I can get rid of the red and I'll put some crumb cake back much better yes as a result okay so I'm not going to try shading on that, am I? No. She says I'm going to do a bit of shading. Let's make that a bit darker. So am I going to try with this one? I think we might as well see what else is going to happen to this. The bronze one is one of the um, blends that are available for skin so that we can get good skin colours. So there's not light and dark on them. So 
I wonder if there is something different about the makeup. Although that doesn't look so bad now that I've coloured it. I've just coloured up the the bit where I felt that it was bleeding. So I might actually leave that. I'll see. Right, so that's that. Now, painting with shimmer paint. You just need to give it a shape. As you can hear, there's a little, like, um, ball, I was going to say a ball bearing in there. So that just helps you to give it a good shake. Um, you can use a wet um, aqua painter. And I've been using this one, uh, which has got an empty barrel to it, but this is wet. Um, but I've used it on four cards so far and the bristles are beginning to divide so I don't know if that's overuse with shimmer paint or not so I went downstairs and uh, I had a look in hubby's um, painting box to see what I could find so I hope I don't damage them Fortunately, he's a very patient man. Right, okay, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to, I haven't done this with a dry brush yet, so this is an experiment, and all I'm doing is going into the lid because there is some shimmer paint in there. Can you see that? Yep. Okay, and all I do is just go into the berry and just go in a little circular movement to make sure that I get all of the berry With the frost white, although I haven't done it yet, one of the things you could use this for is um, if you're doing a snowman, or at least I assume you can. I certainly don't see why you can't, um, because it is a paint. Can you imagine a snowman painted with this? It would look absolutely gorgeous. But I've started off small and I can always move on to bigger. If you've been sitting on the fence thinking about shall you or shan't you get any shimmer paint, I really do recommend it. I will try more videos showing you how to um, get some beautiful effects using the shimmer paint. I certainly think it's worth it. Oh, is that all? There we go. So that's all the berries done. Right, over here I've brought in a little glass of water so that I could give this a wash straight away. That looks okay. And I've got some kitchen roll here. I'm sure that's going to be fine. Right, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to do the sentiment. And what I've done there is I've used um, Cherry Cobbler ink with Versamark as well. And that's how you can um, use any of our inks 
to get heat embossed um, sentiments. Oh, there you go, you can see the shine on there. It works brilliantly. So let me just move all of those out of the way. Just give me a little bit of space here. Um, right, so I need my clear embossing powder, my embossing buddy, my sentiment, uh, first mark and cherry copper ink. Right, now all I'm going to do is I am planning to get this about uh, three quarters, maybe an inch up from the bottom so that I've got enough room to get my bow across there. So let's do our embossing buddy first. And then what we need to do is we ink our stamp with the Versamark first. And then we ink with the Cherry Cobbler ink. This is such a beautiful Christmas red, this one. Okay, make sure I've got enough ink on there. Right, and about three quarters, maybe an inch up. I can see a hair on there. Right. Put a bit more ink on just in case. Right. Try and get straight. Fortunately, this uh, sentiment doesn't need to be perfectly straight. There we go. There we go, beautiful. So all I'm going to do is pop that into there. Tap that off. Put these away. And then I'm just going to get my heat tool going. Now it's a little bit noisy but not too bad and it won't take long. And bear with me. When you're heat embossing, as soon as you see the powder go shiny, that's it. That's enough. Don't go. Don't keep going because it won't get any more shiny. Um, in fact, it finishes up, or at least for me, it seems to finish up going very flat. The shine goes. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to adhere this onto there. Oh, of course, I'll put the um, put my tear and tape on the back ready. I've always thought don't do that when you're doing heat embossing because I'm not quite sure what effect it will have but now I find out. So I'm going to put this onto the cherry cobbler layer and then I'm going to put my ribbon around. Now with my two cards that I've already done on one of them I've used the shimmer shimmery white paper for all of them but I've got embossing powder. Let's move that out of the way. I don't need that. Right. Um, I don't know what I was going to tell you then. Look at it. I don't think that was a particularly good idea. Right, I know what I was going to say. Um, with the ribbon, I've used the polka dot 
uh, tool ribbon, as in T-U-L-L-A. Um, let me turn this up the other way, I can't do it here. It's different when I'm on my own because I can just lean as far forward as I need to. Um, yeah, with the ribbon. It comes in two colours. We have Whisper White and we also have Very Vanilla. And because of the colour of the Shimmery White, you can use either of them. And I will show you that because on my cards I've used White on one and Very Vanilla on the other. Oh, well, that was all right. I hadn't done any real damage of um, because using the heat tool on there when the tear and tape was already on there. Right, um, this one is Whisper White and this one is very vanilla. And you see them and they look fine. Um, it's only when you get really close that you can actually see the difference. So whichever one you have, you can use. Okay. So what am I going to use? Um, I'm going to be using, this is just a little sample that I had. I'm going to take this one. And I am going to tie it around into a bow. Um, ribbon scissors. Yeah, I do this without thinking when I'm on my own. Now I'm thinking about it, I'm getting myself really confused. Right, that's the one that's got to be longest. Right, okay. It doesn't have to be in the right place at the moment. I'll move it once I've done this. This is a little bit tricky because the um, little dots on there do tend to cling. But it's well worth the effort of persevering with it. I'd like the loop to be about the size of my finger, which is why I tend to push that through. And then that one. It also helps to make sure that it is actually straight. I'm not going to come through anymore, are you? you will. Right, a bit of encouragement and you'll do it. So let's just make sure this is nice and straight. Bows in the middle. And on both these I have put, both my cards there, I have put a glue dot behind the bow just to make sure it stays nicely. They both seem to be tipping forward. I'm not sure why they do that. There we go, I think that's okay, isn't it? So let's... That one. One of the reasons I like this ribbon is because it doesn't matter too much if the tails of the ribbon come over the sentiment because you can see through them. There we go. It's alright. 
Yep, I think so. So what I'm going to do first, if I can see my tear and tape, which I know was here, because it had the uh, glue dots sitting in the middle. Oh, there we go. I knew they were both here. So because I always put this on to save a bit of time when I'm making a video, I'm just going to put that on there and that on there. So that will stop the ribbon shifting. While I just get these this backing off. Okay, so what I do that's it. And then the same this side this side first. So I get that up. And get that up. And now it doesn't matter whether I take that backing off or not. Right, which one's my card? Is this it? Just make sure that fits. Not up that way either. Right, no, that looks good. Right, so it's got to go that way, but I want to do it upside down. gems on my cards. Unusual. Right. There we go. I don't think I'm going to do anything about that Robin that's on the front of my card. I think he looks okay. What do you think? It's alright. Okay to leave. I think it is. There we go, so that's that one. Let's just pop the inside. That's what I mean about how it comes through on the back. That's normal. Don't think that you've done something wrong. So, as I say, I will plan some videos where I show you different ways of using the shimmer paint. Maybe three videos altogether. That's not to say there are only three ways of using it. It's partly so that I don't do so many videos just using shimmer paint that you get bored. But then I just want to make sure that I give you enough. So there we go, I hope you've enjoyed today's project. How to use shimmer paint on the berries, just to get that extra little bit of 
shine. You can use um, Wink of Stella on the berries, but I don't think it looks as good as this. <laughs> so there you go. Many thanks for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed this project and I really hope you give it a try. If you have any questions, please leave them in the box below. I'm always happy to answer um, and it's always nice to get your feedback too. I will be putting in the box below all the measurements and all the products that I've used. So you either click on where it says show more or there'll be down arrows. It really depends on which kind of device you're watching this on. If you've enjoyed my video and you'd like to be notified each time I upload a new one, which is normally Wednesdays and Sundays, please click the subscribe button. And if you'd like to give me a thumbs up, that is always very much appreciated. And finally, before I forget, don't forget, I do have a Facebook group called Happy Crafting for crafters to share their projects. Um, I started it because um, a lot of subscribers do actually share their work with me and I felt that it was a shame that it wasn't shared with lots more people um, because they are just really lovely. I appreciate you sharing. Um, very, very grateful for that. Um, but it would be nice if you shared with lots of other people too because they would like to see them as well. Um, so that's Happy Crafting. I'll put a link in the box below as well. So many thanks for joining me today. Until next time, happy crafting. Cheerio.